What is up, you two? James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2018 Back to Back Battles. Again, we're using the Mega Alakazam team over Mega Alakazam, Top of Lele, Braviary, Blacephalon, Ferrothorn, and the Landers fan. Let's get started and play some games. But this team has been doing a lot better than I've expected so far in the past two videos. If you haven't checked out the past two videos, I have, I can go check it out. But I've been on a pretty strong streak with this team. I think, um,. 6-0 on camera, and I believe it's 8-1 in total with this team, which is really, really solid, I think. So, let us see if... is it Was it 8-1 or is it 7-1? I think it's 8-1. Uh, I cannot exactly remember, but I do think it's 8-1. And, yeah, it's just a team I built out of things that I had in my box. So, uh, I guess that's kind of successful. Maybe we can get my Galakazam at 2 the high ladder but right now we got a pretty scary team we're looking at Pelipper, Ludicolo, Snorlax, Tapu Koko, Landis, Farian, and Mawa so this is definitely going to be a hard one Rain isn't exactly my favorable matchup here for sure and I forgot to put Psychic on the Alakazam uh, I got it I'm putting okay I, I'm putting Psychic on after uh, this episode but see how do I want to approach this Braviary plus Ferrothorn looks pretty good because it does do pretty well against my opponent's team in general and I'm thinking maybe Tapu Lele plus Alakazam in the back uh, maybe I should put superpower on my Landers too because that could help in the matchup mm, I kind of like having the switch in mm, how much do I need Lele or Alakazam I might not need Alakazam as much Alakazam doesn't really do as much here. I think Psyshock doesn't really help. If I'm trying to get rid of Ferrothorn early. I mean Ludicolo early with my Ferrothorn. So you know what? Let's go Lele for terrain control. And I think Landris is pretty good. Just as a switch into like the opposing Landris. The Mawal. And other good stuff. Because Landris can help with next to Braviary. I'm thinking if I can get rid of the Ludicolo early on in the game. I could just win with my Braviary. So let's see how this is going to go. Uh, not exactly sure what my opponent's going to lead. Probably I would assume the rain mode, if anything, because it is probably the best thing against me. As we are going to see the Palapar Ludicolo lead. Against my Braviary plus my Ferrothorn here. And now I got to wonder, probably a Hydro Vortex coming out. Maybe Fake Out Hurricane, but I just don't think you risk that. Turn 1. Uh, you might switch out in the Landris or Mawal here if you're the Pelipper. I think you brought Coco. I would assume you bring Coco in the back. And I'm thinking maybe Mawal. So I don't think you have Landris actually. We'll protect and go for the Power Whip. Turn 1. If I can get the Power Whip, I should be able to knock out Ludicolo. I wonder if I live Hydro Vortex plus Hurricane. I do have a little bit of special defense investment on this Ferrothorn, but I'm not exactly sure if it does live the double up from Ludicolo and Pelipper here. But if it does, that's an absolutely huge turn for me. Uh, if my opponent gets Tailwind up, it's not the end of the world. So I'm not really that... I'm not really upset if ta a Tailwind goes up here. If I can get rid of Ludicolo, that's amazing. And especially since my opponent doesn't uh, go for a switch out for an Intimidate Mon. So we're going to see the Fake Out come out. Target's on the Braviary, not Fake Out instead of Hydro Vortex is interesting. Goes for the Tailwind. If I hit Power Whip, I'm in a fantastic position. Please, Ferrothorn. Nice. And that should be able to knock out Ludicolo because we are Choice Banded. Knocks out the Ludicolo. And that is a huge threat. Turn 1 gone. Of course, very, very fortunate. As let's see what my opponent's going to bring out. Going to be Tapu Koko, which is interesting here. Um, what am I more scared of? I kind of want to get rid... I'm not sure if Banded Power Up knocks out Tapu Koko. I'm, I don't think it does. How worried about am I about Tapu Koko? Not really too worried. I think Landris is a good switch. And just going for a Power Up into Pelipper. Because I do want to break that Sash on Pelipper potentially. I'm pretty sure Hurricane's going to come out in a fair form. Maybe a Volt Switch or a Thunder right here comes out. But right here, getting a power up, getting my Landris in. Unless you double target a baby or a Scald, but I just don't see you Scalding. I think you have to try to get rid of the Ferrothorn. I don't think your team had a good matchup against Ferrothorn in the first place, so I feel like you will target down here. Uh, maybe a double up, but I just want to make sure Bravier is safe because Bravier is so useful in this game. As we do see the Volt Switch actually does target down the Ferrothorn, so good play for my opponent. I wonder if that's a Mawal coming in. It's Life Orb on the top of Coco. So maybe my opponent wants to avoid the Choice Banded Power Whip onto that slot, which is really smart there. 
Let's see what my opponent brings up. Probably the Mawal. Oh, it's Snorlax. Okay, that makes this game a lot more interesting. Hurricane does come out. Target down the Ferrothorn here. Gets a crit, which is unfortunate. And the confusion. Uh, Ferrothorn? That's really unlucky there. That is really unlucky right there. Um, I guess I'll try to sack Farrah so I can get a free switch in, but that's really unfortunate right there. That is really unfortunate right there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're going to go for Hurricane into the Farrah slot anyway, but you know what? Say Protect on Landers because I do need it. There's a chance you might also double up the Landers because of the fact it could be a Choice Scarf variant or Assault Vest and might not carry Protect, so you might want to just double up the Landers slot. Let's see what my opponent's going to go for. It is going to be the Brine into the Landers slot and a Belly Drum coming out from the Snorlax. So the Snorlax is a little bit of a threat. It is a little bit of a threat. I'm not really... As worried about the Snorlax, though. But let's see what my opponent decides to go for the following turn. As I will go for the Power Whip. And if I connect, that'd be great. I do. So that's great. So we break a potential Sash on the Pelipper. And yeah, it is Focus Sash. Or oh, it just lived. Wow. Okay. I gotta figure out what kind of Snorlax this is. Because I really don't know. Um, I think Sacking Lele here is the smartest play that I do have. And trying to get damage on the Snorlax sounds like the best call to me right here. Because I need to get my... I think in order to win the game, I need Landers right next to my Braviary. And I have to call the 50-50 on what kind of Snorlax this is here. So I'll go Lele here. And power up the Snorlax. In case you don't target Farrah here, which you should always. Snorlax is actually going to protect. So it is a protect lax. Okay. Uh, that makes it interesting as Hurricane is going to come out and target down my Pelipper slot. Okay. That is fine. Because now I get the free switch in to my Braviary. And I think Z-Move should... Uh, Z-Move plus Psychic should allow me to knock out Snorlax. No matter what variant... I know Terrain would guarantee it, but I'm not sure if I would knock out a Max Defense Snorlax. We'll find out here, though. Is it smart for me to go for Moonblast just in case? Hmm. I'm really thinking about the Moonblast play, because Moonblast might be my most optimal play. But I'm not sure if you switch out Pelipper into Coco. You might. But it's only 5 base power, right? So, I think I can risk it here. Yeah, and even if you switch out to Coco, my lander should still actually be able to win this game, I think. Yeah, because Snorlax would only be able to target down one Pokemon. So, yeah, I think I can still win this game with just uh, my lander's Farian. Because here's what I'm thinking. If Pelipper switches out, which is fine, it protects. Oh, no, I do not think that was the call at all, actually. I will be able to get a Psychic off into the Snorlax slot and Z-Move. Yeah, Z-Move should guarantee KO at that range, I think. Because I was thinking, unless you have Rock Slide on the Snorlax, and since we saw Protect and Belly Drum, I really doubt you carry Rock Slide. I'd be able to knock you out with the Terrain plus Z move. If you switch out to Coco for Pelipper in order to try to maybe live the double up, Snorlax can only pick one target. If it targets down Lele, that's fine because everything on your team is in range for like Coco, I mean Lele plus a Landris Life Orb attack. So. That's the reason why I decided to make that play. It ends up working out. Rain stops. So if that Coco has Thunder, which I would assume it would, it's only going to be about 70% accurate as the top of Coco will come out on my opponent's side of the field. And I'll just go for Psychic in the Pelipper. And I think Tailwind, I could go on the Landis right here for my Braviary, or I could do it the other way around. But I feel like this uh, covers all risk other than maybe Discharge right here and a Double Protect from Pelipper. And I don't think that's going to be very likely here. So I will go for Psychic here and Tailwind. This should guarantee me the game because even if you like Para, Thunder Para, Lele, get the double Pelipper, I get the Tailwind up so I can knock out Pelipper unless you get a triple protect. But even then, I get Coco in for free here. And as long as uh, Lele doesn't get, you know, like Para so many times that I lose the game, I should be able to win. Pelipper is going to go down, not even a double protect. So Pelipper will go down there. As we will see the Dazzling Gleam actually come out, maybe trying to catch the Landers on the switch in. 
but not going to help as I will be able to get Talon up and that's just secure the game because I think I'm going to be able to knock out the Tapu Koko with a Psychic plus Brave Bird combination now. And I don't think my opponent has a way to stop that. So I'll go for Psychic here and I'll go for not Talon but Brave Bird in the Tapu Koko and that should be a good game. So really nice here as we were able to pull through. Luckily the turn one was absolutely huge allowing me to get rid of my opponent's Ludicolo. My opponent didn't have a good switch in the Choice Bandit Fairphone which was able to put in so much work. The confusion kind of set me back a bit but still ended up being able to pull the game because Fairphone was able to land a Choice Band power whip right there which was absolutely huge. And yeah, the late game I think was set up for me in a position where I could have just won the game as long as I either hit my moves with Rock Slide specifically, because I might have had to rely on Rock Slide at that point. Or, um, you know, if you don't switch right there, I just get to Kale and Snorlax there. So, really nice as we'll go for our second game. And yeah, unfortunately, Mega Alakazam didn't get to come in at that match. But it's okay, it's okay. Uh, we have brought my Galakazam for quite a few battles and it has put in some work, but hopefully we will be able to bring it again in this episode and hopefully we'll be able to do some more work. I still would like to have Psychic as we got HXT Jave. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce this, but uh, we have faced before, I believe. Rocking the team of Tapu Lele, Rifblim, Garchomp, Heatran, Milotic, and... Tapu Koko. Now this is an extremely interesting team. This team's like really interesting. Um Huh. Very interesting team. Man, I wish I had Psychic on my Alakazam now because that would be fantastic here. Hmm. I also don't know if Blacephalon knocks out Tapu Lele. I think it should. Shadow Ball should, I think. Uh, I forgot what Blacephalon's base special attack is, but I think it's decently high enough to KO a Tapu Lele. I think I'll go Braviary here with Blacephalon. I think that is my best lead here. With Alakazam, I think. And I think I go Landris as the last one. So I can hit that Heatran for more damage. And what I do here is if you lead Driftlim Lele, I get I Tailwind and Shadow Ball the top of Lele slot. And then next turn I can Z-Move and Shadow Ball the Lele slot. So I have a few options here. So let's see how this is going to go. Because I definitely think I have a few options. I forgot what Driftlim's speed usually hits, I think. Uh, they vary now, I think. Because uh, I'm trying to remember what they would EB for for this generation. But we do see Driplum top of Lele lead, which is perfectly fine for me. Unless this is a Choice Scarf Lele, I really don't fear too much here. And I'm not sure if you're going to run Choice Scarf on this team. You could, obviously, but I'm not exactly sure. Usually you would tend to run Z-Move plus Taunt in order to help against like Trick Room Mutts. And my opponent's team doesn't really appreciate Trick Room much, so I, don't, I think it would be a Taunt variant. Make a Shadow Ball into the top of the slot. My opponent doesn't have a good switch in the Shadow Ball, and just the Talon is very safe here. But let's see. Also, Mega Garchomp. It could be Mega Garchomp, and that could be really interesting in this game. So let's see how this is going to go. So, Dribbler is just going to Tailwind. So, what kind of Lele this is? If it gets knocked out by Shadow Ball, I'm in a fantastic position. But it could be a bulky Lele, for all I know. If it's a bulky Lele, it could screw up my position. But I'm able to knock out the top of the Lele turn one. Oh, critical hit. I'm not sure that mattered. It really just depended on the top of the Lele set. But I'm just going to be able to knock out the top of the Lele, get that Beast Boost, and trade Tailwinds here, which is pretty bad for my opponent. Because my opponent really doesn't have much at Aspies Blacephalon other than Tapu Koko. So, really nice turn for me, I think. My opponent is forced to choose a new Pokemon. I think Coco might be the Pokemon that decides to come in here. Heatran. Hmm. Not what I really expected, but I think I'll take that. What's coming out? Heat Wave? I pretty much get a free Shadow Ball into the Driplum slot because Driplums don't tend to carry uh, Protect. So I think Shadow Ball should be able to knock out the Driplum at this range, and I'm pretty sure it will. 
And I want to make sure Braviary is kept healthy just in case I need it. Shadow Ball is going to come out, probably just target down the Blacephalon, which I'm fine training Blacephalon here because the only Pokemon I really needed Blacephalon for was the Lele, and specifically it could help against this Driplim. So I will be able to knock out the Driplim here with the Shadow Ball. So we're going to exchange my Blacephalon here for two of my opponent's Pokemon, which is, you know, a pretty good trade if I do say so myself. So definitely do like that trade here. Blacephalon I'm going to get Beast Boost and if you miss Heat Wave, I get another turn. But I'm actually hoping my opponent hits Heat Wave because that would have... Uh, uh, I would have liked the free switch in the Landis, but I guess I can't really complain too much as Garchomp is going to be forced to come out here. And... I mean, yeah, I really just didn't mind if my opponent hit a Heat Wave once again. As I said, I was trying to get the free switch in the Landis right there. But I guess this works out in my favor. Because now I can just go for some chip damage uh, with C moving to protect and just go for a Shadow Ball into the Heatran. Yeah, I'll just make that play. I really... The crit might have mattered turn one, as I said before. But I... Again, I didn't care my opponent got these hit off into my Blacephalon. I got a free switch in the Landers, which was absolutely huge for me. So Garchomp is going to protect to try to avoid a plus two Shadow Ball, but I am going to Shadow Ball the Heatran. I could have doubled up the Heatran, that is another factor here, but I don't feel like I need to. And I want to put this Garchomp in range of potential uh, Zemu, I mean, attack from my Alakazam at this point. So, go for the Super Sonic Sky Strike here. And I want to say the damage is going to be enough. It's going to be close. But then again, I'm pretty sure my... At this point, as long as I just weaken the Garchomp to where Life Orb Earthquake for my Landis variant picks up the knockout, I 100% win this game. Because unless this Garchomp or Heatran has like some kind of substitute or speed boosting ability move that could help, I, it's not going to really help my opponent out. Heatwave going to come out. Does connect finally. But yeah, I do have a Landis as I said before. And I do have a Mega Alakazam waiting for my opponent. So, just bring out my Mega Alakazam here and just click a Psy Shock into the Garchomp slot and a Superpower into the Heatran slot. Do I even have to target down the Heatran? Not really, actually. Yeah, I'll just target down the Garchomp. It doesn't really hurt, I guess. It really doesn't hurt. Again, as long as I get one attack into the Garchomp... I do win with my Landers. Maybe a Garchomp gets a double. I don't. I trace the Sand Force and he trans able to knock out my Alakazam. Maybe it could get a little bit ugly. But I'm pretty sure Landers should still be able to win this game because I don't think Garchomp, unless Aqua Tail something or crits me or something, would work. And I do trace Flash Fire in this instance. We'll get a Psy Shock off. I'm pretty sure Psychic would have actually picked up the knock on Garchomp. As, yeah, I missed a knockout with Psychic. Stommy Tantrum actually comes out, which is interesting. Parts down Alakazam and doesn't actually pick up the knockout, which is funny. As we will be able to get a Brave Bird off into the Garchomp slot. And that will be able to pick up the knockout onto that Garchomp. So, yep. And we're going to see Heat Wave, Flash Fire Boost from my Alakazam. And we're going to see, you know, just it, it target Braviary. And Braviary actually survives there. So, it didn't really matter. Again, I had Landers in the back. The only thing that might have mattered turn one, again, was the crit. But, as I said before, it might not have mattered depending on the spread. Because if it's not a really bulky Lele, it's not going to survive a Shadow Ball. So, and even if it did survive, it would probably be slower than my Braviar, I would imagine. Because it just wouldn't be able to do much. I'm pretty sure it was just Z-move Lele. I'm pretty sure it was just like a speedy Z-move Lele. And if that was the case, my opponent really didn't have much for uh, my Blacephalon at that point. But, yep, we're going to take another win, and we're going to find our last battle of today. Actually, uh, oh, wait, someone's calling me. I'll be right back. Uh, and, yeah. All right, we're back after a quick phone call that I had to take. Sorry about that, but it was a pretty important call. So, as we find our last opponent, Agati Stall from the United States. I hope I'm saying that right. I, I actually wonder if this is, like, an alt card for, like, the actual player who's named Agati from Bra from like Brazil? Uh, I'm not sure, but right here we got a team. Metagross, Kangaskhan, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, Landis Varian, and Cresselia. So this is going to be interesting. I really love Braviary here. Braviary is like fantastic in this matchup. I think Braviary plus Landis puts on so much pressure. Or maybe I just go like Braviary Blacephalon, for instance. I think that could also put in a lot of work too. 
And I actually really like that combination because it just deals really well against my opponent's team. I wonder if I should bring Lele because I'm not sure how well Lele does. I'm not really. I don't really feel Alakazam though. I know that for a fact. I just don't feel it does well here. I mean, I think I could see it just because having Protect might be useful here. I definitely want Bravery or Blacephalon as a lead, I think. It covers a lot of options for my opponent. I definitely want Landris in the back. And the question is, do I want Lele? I mean, Lele can help me. It doesn't help me avoid Fake Out. Do I want Fairphone in case my opponent decides to go for the Trick Room mode? Hmm. I don't want Ferrothorn because Ferrothorn is a decent switch in, but then again, it helps against a trick room mode. You know what? I think the Chris. Oh, great. I timed out a bit. I was going to click Ferrothorn. I think they're going to give me Alakazam. I really think they're going to give me Alakazam, and that's probably the worst option I had because I've I was thinking Ferrothorn because it helps with trick room when my opponent decides to opt for his trick room lead. So this is this could get pretty ugly. So let's see what my opponent's gonna opt for here. It's gonna be Kangaskhan Cresselia. Yep, Fair Farm would have been better here. Oh well. Bravery A plus Blacephalon. I mean, if they gave me Fair Farm, that's a fantastic for me. If they didn't, this is gonna be real ugly real fast. Yep, they gave me Alexander. Uh, that's not... I mean, I guess I'll just try to get damage off turn one in a Kang. Uh, Cresselia's not much of a threat in my opinion, so I'm just gonna go for a Heat Wave plus Z move. I don't think Kangaskhan can knock me out in one hit. Heat Wave and a Brave Bird, if it's like a slow Kangaskhan, would be able to pick up the knockout if you decide not to go for Fake Out, which, I mean, I'm pretty sure you should go for Fake Out here. This is like one of the worst positions I think I've ever been in. Fake Out gonna come out, Targets on Brave Bear, which is fine. That does a decent amount. Heat Wave comes out. I missed a Kangaskhan, which matters if it's a bulky Kangaskhan, so... Ah, uh, not looking that great here. It's just an Icy Wind, actually. Wait. Huh. Oh, that does a bit too much to Braviary. Man, I wish I had the Heat Wave, because I could have went for Heat Wave into Overheat the following turn. Uh, that sucks. Oh well. I'm gonna fire off another heat wave and just protect. I think you have to target down the Braviary if you're my opponent on the opponent side. I'm not sure if the Kangaskhan will carry Sucker Punch. If it, go, if it has Sucker Punch, you go for it here, I guess. Double edge in the Braviary, which is fine. Maybe it's just a, a attack from Cresselia. We do hit this heat wave. Let's find out what kind of Kangaskhan it is. Oh, that's a bit bulky. Gonna be the Shattered Psyche coming out. Okay. So that should knock out Blacephalon, I would imagine. If it doesn't, like, I'll be really shocked. Yeah. <laughs> this game probably could have went so many different ways. I think turn one, I would have definitely... I think, actually, even if... I would probably just switch down and protect turn one. Uh, that's just such a big mistake for me. Um. Okay. I think I go Alakazam here. Oh, if I trace Parental Bond, that could be a fun factor here. If I trace Parental Bond, that could be a fun factor here. I'm gonna go Landris here and hope Shadow Ball can be enough to knock out Cresselia, I think. If I trace Parental Bond, I'm actually still in this like by a lot, actually. Because I think I can live Sucker Punch with the Intimidate thanks to the Sucker Punch nerf plus Parental Bond nerf. Uh, I think you have to still target down the Braviar slot, because I don't think you can, one, allow Tailwind to go off ever. I really don't think you can allow Tailwind to go off ever. I think you always double-edge Braviar and, and maybe attempt an Icy Wind or Trick Room here. So let's see, because this could lead to a new, a new benefit to me. Let's see. Sally is going to retreat and Cinnaroar might be coming in. Oh, it's just Feeny, okay. Not the worst for me, but not the best either. So I'll get free damage on a Feeny, but it's not exactly the most beneficial. If I, I, if I trace Parental Bond here, I'm still liking my position quite a bit. 
So let's see, if we trace Parent to Bond, we still get a good amount, I think, here. Because we put Feeny in the range of the Z-move, which is pretty important. So Mega Ball of Alakazam, let's see what my opponent goes for. It might just be the Ice Punch here if you have it, because I think Ice Punch is fair. We get the Misty Surge, which isn't exactly the best option for us here, as we will go for a Shadow Ball into Feeny. Doesn't do much, Double Edge is going to come out here. Target down my Lander Slot. Okay, I don't know if that's Jolly or Adamant damage. I feel like that's Jolly damage. Huh. I think Earthquake plus Protect is my best play here. Even if it's Jolly Kang. As Kang is going to withdraw, which is fine here. Go out into Incineroar. So Incineroar is catching a Life Orb Earthquake, which is actually fantastic for me, I think. Yeah, that's fantastic for me. As well, protect Alakazam here and get this damage off into the Incineroar. What does the Feeny do is my question. I could have also went for Rockside Psyshock. Which I definitely think could have been a good play too, but I don't think that was the best play I had. I get a good amount of damage off. And just a Skull targeting down the Landers, which is fine. I would have loved if I subbed up better. Uh, no, no, because I would have broken it with the Earthquake. Or maybe I switch in a Braviary there, but I don't think that's a good play either in case he decides to Moonblast the Alakazam. I get Braviary in, which is good. Hmm. Now, it's not impossible for me to win. I do have some cards set up. Yeah, this is not looking too, too good for me. Because one, I could see maybe Feeny protecting and Sonora just going for the attack. The other option is just a fake out, obviously, and uh, attack with Feeny. I think I gotta stall it out if that's the case. I think I have to I have to sub here and protect Braviary. Hope you fake out the Braviary. Uh, we're gonna see Feeny retreat here, so that might be Kang. Good play. What is the Incineroar going for? Is it a fake out or is it an attack? Because I would have loved to Brave Bird the uh, Braviary. Ooh, okay. That's not a bad turn for me at all. Except I think I need a double protect in order to come back in this game, which is unfortunate. I got to go for the double right here, I think. With Braviary, and I think I have to get a Psy Shock. I don't have to knock out the Kangaskhan, but I do need the double here. I do fail the double here. Fake out into Flare Blitz should be targeting down the Braviary slot, and that should be able to seal up this game. Unless my opponent targeted down the Alakazam, because if we target down the Alakazam, I do win with Braviary plus Alakazam, most likely, I think. Unless uh, Kangaskhan does have Sucker Punch. We knock out Kangaskhan? No way. Okay, that's like Noble Kang. U-turn gonna come out. Tarzan on Braviary. Can we survive this? Ah... Not enough. Braviary will go down and Incineroar. Can we win? No, we would have needed like Parental Bond. We would have had to hope it was Assault Vest Incineroar. Hope I had Parental Bond on deck. I think that was the only way I could have won that. Feeny's gonna come in. And Incineroar? Yeah, you should always go Incineroar here. And you should always go for Moonblast and Fake Out. No, you should always Moonblast and U-Turn. Yeah, you should always U-Turn. <laughs> you should always U-Turn so you can get Crescent. Uh, I actually want should have probably went for Shadow Ball in the center. Since I can't win this game anyway, I should have went for Shadow Ball in the center just to see if I did get Parental Bond. Uh, how much damage I would have done because that could have been pretty big. U-turn gonna come out into the Alakazam. Yep. So that means Cresselia is coming in. That's definitely the smartest play my opponent could have made. Cresselia will be coming out. Yep. Mist disappears from the battlefield, but doesn't matter. Incineroar is going to come in again. And Fake Out Trick Room is your best option here. Because it covers every single play. You don't risk me having some kind of weird move on Alakazam. If I did have Focus Blast, I would have went for it onto the Incineroar earlier. But I'm not going to run Focus Blast because, you know, I'm never going to run Focus Blast. 
Uh, maybe I should see sh how much Shadow Ball... Yeah, I should see how much Shadow Ball is in the center, but it's just gonna fake out in Trick Room. Fake out comes out. I don't think you Icy Wind here. Unless you don't have Trick Room for some reason. Yep, Trick Room. So that's gonna be a good game to my opponent. So very well played from my opponent. I think uh, not having Fairphorn definitely did hurt me quite a bit, but I definitely could have probably made some better plays overall in this match, I feel like. Hmm. I'm trying to think, what were the other turns that I had, possibly, that I could have um, been able to do really well in this game? I think... Maybe Protect Earthquake wasn't a play. Maybe Protect Earthquake wasn't a play. Hmm. Maybe I should have just went for, like, Rock Slide, Psy Shock, for instance. Maybe I would have been able to knock out the Feeny, which I don't think I would have been able to... Because I think, what was it? It was Kang, Feeny, and I think uh, Incineroar switched in that turn. So with the Intimidate, I don't think I would have been able to do that. No, wait, no. Incineroar switched in earlier, right? Maybe I went for Rock Slide, go for Flinch, maybe. But, yeah. Very good game to my opponent. Uh, it was really tough for me to handle the Kangaskhan since I wasn't able to put on enough pressure to potentially just knock it out. And uh, Braviary got weakened pretty early in the game. Maybe I should have just went for a Protect Braviary, uh, you know, Heat Wave. Heat Wave miss was a little bit unfortunate because I think Heat Wave and Overheat might have been able to knock out the Kangaskhan. Although, again, just speculation. But even if we don't knock it out, it would have put it in range where uh, Kangaskhan, if it decides to ever go for Double Edge, it will knock itself out. So it would have been uh, less of a threat I could have hand uh, to handle. But uh, yeah, I don't think it was too big there. And yeah, just not having Fairphorn just allowed me not to be able to put pressure on Kangaskhan Cresselia alongside Feeny. So pretty difficult to deal with that. But I think Alakazam could have actually pulled through if I played it a little bit differently. But hope that everyone enjoyed today's episode of EDC 2018 Vector Balance. I hope you enjoyed it. I think with the team we went 8-1 so far and 8 wins in a row. That's not bad for a Mega Alakazam team. I don't think so. But hope that everyone enjoyed today's episode of VGC 2018 Back to Balance. If you did like it, please leave a like down below. Show us your support. I suppose you can check out the rest of my stuff down below in the description. Such as my social media, society, here's on my channel. And all that good stuff will be linked down below. Including the team if you do want to go try it out. Once again, this is a team I just grabbed out of my boxes. But, you know, um, <laughs> uh, it's been working. So, hope that everyone enjoyed. Have a great day, people. Until we battle again, I'll catch you all later. Thank you.